Hello and welcome to my home. Today I'm going to talk about setting up your summer container garden and I have some tips that I use when I'm setting up my containers. But before we go there, I want to let you know I have other types of videos on my channel. I have easy to prepare recipes, product reviews, meditation videos, and other videos on how to grow a variety of vegetables and containers. So let's go ahead and start talking about setting up your summer vegetable and fruit container garden. First, I want to speak to those who are starting to contain a garden for the first time. You're going to have to find containers that have drain holes because drainage is very important. Or use some of those cloth smart pots or grow bags that they have out on the market and you're going to need to use potting mix. You never use topsoil, you never use soil from your yard, it's just too heavy and dense and you're going to introduce weeds into your containers. Also make sure you have some good all-purpose fertilizer, make sure you have a watering can. So those types of housekeeping things I want to get out there first. Next, when you're setting up your container garden, you want to make sure you're putting it in an area where you're going to have a good six to eight hours of sun. There are some vegetables that will get away with you know, a little less sun, but generally trying to have at least six to eight hours of sunlight coming into your container. Now, time. Time, I'm going to split it out into two. It's going to take time to set up your containers. So if you're starting out, um, and you're going to have a lot of containers and a lot I'm going to say if you have more than five containers think about the time it's going to take to set those containers up putting in the potting mix putting in the fertilizer planting your plants or planting your seeds and the time it's going to take to get them off to a good start and then I want you to think about the time it's going to take to maintain those as they get bigger and start to produce vegetables or fruits. Now in the beginning, you know, each container will probably only take you about five to ten minutes to do, but as your plants get larger, I'm going to say it's going to take ten to fifteen minutes because as they get bigger, not only are you watering and fertilizing, you need to start checking for pests and disease. And if you encounter those things, it's going to take extra time to mediate those issues. So keep that in mind for your time. Space. Now space is very important because if you're going to use your patio or your deck or your yard, wherever you're putting your container, is it going to be a multi-use area? For example, are you going to want to sit in that space as well? And are you going to want to you know, set up your grill, your barbecue, your smoker? So uh, make sure you have enough space for that. And I suggest you do what I call a dry run. So just take some empty containers, empty pots, and put them in the areas that you think you want them to go. And step back and take a look at it. Put a chair and, and see if, if that works as far as seating. And even have your grill out and around in that area to see if you have enough room to move around. You can move around, your family can move around, and your guests can move around. Also, I want to step back a little bit about the, um, the containers. Now, you need to make sure you have the right container size for whatever you're growing. And I have several videos on growing different vegetables, and I talk about the, the container size. So you can refer to those videos. I'll put a few towards the end of this video and some down in my description box. Now, I want to talk about the deliciousness factor. So you want to grow um, those things that you and your family really like to eat. Now you can always experiment. I, I, I experiment with different um, seeds all the time, but if you know your family really can't stand broccoli or Brussels sprouts or green beans or whatever, um, you may not want to waste your time and your space growing something, even though the homegrown varieties of any of those vegetables and fruits are going to taste much better than what you can find in the market. I also want to talk a bit about, um, I'm going to call it safety. So make sure you don't have your containers blocking your doorways or blocking a good path. Um, you know, not to be, you know, I guess make anyone panic, but you never know when you're going to have an emergency and maybe that door may be the only door you and your family can exit out of. So you want to make sure you have a good, clear path. Also, if you are um, gardening on something high up like a balcony or a deck 
make sure that deck and that balcony is um, structurally sound so that it can hold the weight of the pots and you and whoever else is going to be on that structure. Um, it seems like every so often during the summer we hear about decks, decks and porches, well, decks and balconies collapsing because too many people were on that structure. So um, I think in most counties you can have an inspector come out. Sometimes they'll do it for free. If you're in a condo or an apartment, talk to your homeowners association and see if they know what the, um, I want to say, the weight load is for your balcony just to make sure everyone is safe. One last thing, I'm looping back to the space. Some vegetables take more space than others. They start off small, but they spread out really big. For example, squash. Squash needs a wide surface area, I'm going to say about two to three feet of growing area as they get large and their leaves and branches spread out and they start producing their vegetables. Tomatoes can be kind of um, branchy as well if you're someone who doesn't prune their tomatoes. So keep all that spacing in mind and you want to leave enough space so that you can reach in and get all your wonderful fruits and vegetables. So keep that in mind as well. Lastly, my tip is have fun. Enjoy your garden. Even if you're growing one container, enjoy what you accomplish with that one container. And um, I hope you take the time and not just see this as just a work or something functional, but something nice to do and enjoyable. If you like that video, hit the thumbs up like button and consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when I've uploaded a new video. That's it for now. Bye bye.